all I've got to do now is to put the fuel pipe back on. And uh, then we're done. So, line those up. Get those on. Is that right? Yeah. Check we're right. Uh, obviously, you need to check that these filters are clean. But the, I mean, they are. If you've got a dirty tank, then that's when they tend not to be clean. a little clean These banjo bolts it's a bit gungy around the edge and make sure they go back with the uh, fiber washers they're always awkward these because the fuel line is always in slightly the wrong place and so it tightens on the nut on the banjo bolt and makes it hard to screw them back in again just check the actual banjo for any gunge in the bottom of that these are all clean as a whistle Tighten these banjos up now. Still on the Whitworth, don't forget. Give them a decent tighten. Not over tight, but a decent tighten, otherwise they'll leak. And there we go. There we have it. There's our carbs just service. I'm glad that we did it because they were so they were sort of glued up. They were gummed up inside. There's something that was sticking and making the throttle valve stick, and they would never have run right if we hadn't done that. So I'm glad that we took the time to strip them down just to check. Uh, the second thing is there's these manifold rubbers. These look a little bit dodgy, so I'm going to replace them. They're just beginning to crack. So they're not that expensive, so I'm going to replace the rubbers that they connect the gantry to the actual uh, cylinder head. Um, but yeah, uh, always always worth taking the carbs apart and cleaning them down if the bike's been off the road for any length of time, because it's amazing how they can uh, block up or gum up in this case. Nothing was blocked. All the pilot circuits were okay, but the actual throttle valves were really sticky really gummed up and now now they're running really nicely there we go okay just a couple of uh, general things on the uh, on the carbs uh now that they're all finished <clears throat> first of all what i think i meant i should have said when we started out is that normally i wouldn't service the carburetors in that way um normally i find that they're pretty worn out anyway and the best thing to do is simply to either renew them or possibly have them reconditioned at somewhere like 3d motorcycles um because these mark one emails they wear out really fast and when they wear out they start leaking air especially around the throttle valve or throttle slides and once that starts going then the whole thing uh, what will never be in tune. Um, so, 
and and then you and if that's worn out you probably need new jets and new floats like and and so on and then the whole thing can add up to nearly the cost of new carburetors and then you might as well buy the new premier carburetors which have uh the the actual pilot jet goes in this side which is blanked off on these standard carburetors so the pilot jet on a premier carburetor is no longer actually in the middle of the carburetor it's the the premier the uh, pilot jet is actually in a screw that goes in there so that means that you can take the pilot jet out change the size of the pilot jet and above all if you need to and above all you can clean out that that tricky uh, pilot circuit airway so much more easily okay um now the reason that i service these is they're apparently quite new carbs i want to say new carbs they've had uh, apparently very little use since they were bought bought so that's why they got things like the old floats in but that's why i've I, i've rebuilt them as is because they've they're actually uh, pretty new and very little use that's number one number two and then someone contacted me and said, well, uh, they'd had a problem with the old plastic floats and ethanol fuel. So I contacted Berlin. That's that's like the people that like the modern email, if you like. And um, they said, yeah, there, there, there can be a problem with the floats with um, modern fuels. Um, to be honest, reading between the lines and talking to them, I don't think it's a, a massive problem for those of us that use our bikes very infrequently. And uh, especially if we drain the float poles, drain the carburetors when the, the bike stood over winter. But um, apparently there is a, it can be that it can soften the plastic and soften, therefore soften the tank. Not on this, this is on, on the plastic ones in there. And so therefore the floats can drop a bit. Um, so anyway, so what we decided to do was to be on the safe side I rung the owner and we're going to change the floats anyway. So these are the new stay up floats. So um, they're not uh, hollow like the original ones. They're stay up, they're solid. So if, if a bit of this is damaged, then uh, it'll still float. And also if it's punctured or splits, it'll still float. Because those hollow ones, if they split, you know, if they allow fuel in, then uh, they'll sink. I've, I've had that before on old, old ones. And the other advantage of these is, this is these are the ones, because they've got a metal tang, you can adjust the float height so much more easily simply by bending that tang, okay, and to, to work out, to set it exactly where the, um, where the, the float should, should be, where the needle, uh, where the float valve should shut. And there's a little note that comes with them. Factory settings, um, set so that the curved edge is level with or just above the edge of the float chamber and this position works well on most bikes however the stainless steel float tanks can be tweaked to give a higher or lower fuel level uh, to help synchronize twin cylinder machines so you that's when you use those tanks to tweak the fuel level but i'm interested to say that it says the curved edge is level with or just above the edge of the float chamber so if you were watching the videos before, I said to set these floats just below the edge of the float chamber, but with these stay-up floats, it's saying to set them this curved edge just above, which I'm surprised at, but that's what it says, so that's what we'll, we'll do. Maybe there's a slightly different design, because, of course, if it goes up too high, it's just simply going to hit, like, the bottom of the throttle body, and then it can't close, can't go up any higher, because the throttle, you know, so that's why I'm a bit surprised it says just above because it's just going to hit the bottom of the actual body of the carburetor and it won't be able to go up and it won't be able to close. But that's what it says, so that's what we'll do. So that's just a little rider to the work we've been doing on these carbs. And, and again, as I say, it's another reason for why it can be easier to simply, if your carbs are at all suspect, to simply buy new. Because just buying the floats, there's no, there's no spindle, there's no needle, just these floats um comes with a new gasket but they're 25 quid each so that set, set us back 75 quid just uh, just to replace the floats so new carbs they aren't cheap but if you start replacing all the jets and the throttle valves and this that, and the other uh and then you've still got a set of old carbs um but you spent a fortune so if in any doubt i'd always replace the carbs 
because they're so central to the good running of an engine. They're essential. You know, and if your engine's not running right, it tends to be the carburetors that's the problem. I mean, you know, if it's you know, not, not, not running too well and certainly not ticking over well. So um, just always, always bear that in mind when working with the carbs. Okay. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to take the fuel lines off and then just drop the um, float chambers. I'm going to leave the, all the carburetors assembled still as they are and simply put in the new floats, adjusting the heights according to, to this little guide, and then put the float bowls back on and then the fuel lines back on. 